What's good, y'all? Good morning. It's about 40 degrees right now where I'm at. It's a little colder. I feel like my muscles tighten up a little more in the mornings when it's colder. When I do strength workouts, it's not even the workout I did the last day, like, you know, the day before. It's like the accumulation of all the workouts I've done that, like, affect how I'm feeling in the morning. And with the cardio workouts, it's not as much of a curve, like, recovery-wise, but it still, you know, plays a part in it. And I've gotten better. I feel like I got a routine down pat, but there has been times where I definitely pulled my hamstring coming out of bed and it just was a long morning. So you know, a lot more awake now. I already know I got that C4 going to wake me up a little bit. Also got a breakfast burrito from a uh, Wawa. Only about like 490 calories. Not too bad. No cheese in it. Just bacon and uh, eggs. Going back off what I said earlier, so the routine and you know what your training program is is gonna really make a big difference on how you feel in the morning. And when it comes to balancing your routine, it's really up to you know you to figure out like what you like and what you don't like and what you're actually looking for. Because there's different benefits to you know whether you like to do cardio, or whether you like to do strength training. I know for me, cardio is more of a stress reliever. It helps me you know kind of unwind and sort out my thoughts because you're on a treadmill or you're walking or you're running for an extended duration of time and there's only so many you know things you could think about like by the time you're done with the you know run or your session like you usually get a chance to really sit down with yourself and you know go through your thoughts because even when i listen to music like I, li I can listen to music for a whole cardio session but like after about like a couple songs like five six you know songs i start to get like burned out with like the volume, whether it's like a like heavy song, if it's like all like high like BPM songs and I'm like tired, like it, it just is a no go. But for the most part, like I just like to bring down the volume of my cardio. I like to just unwind my thoughts. But for strength training, like it's hard for, you know, it depends on how what type of training you're doing. So if you're doing high intensity interval training, you're going to be out of breath pretty much the whole time. And you're just going to be trying to, you know, get through the next rep and the next rep after that. But if you're doing the like traditional like max strength training where you have to like sit and wait in between the sets for about three to five minutes to get the adaptations you want it's just going to take a lot longer and you're just going to get bored like you could do mobility in between you could do some lighter exercises you could do some core in between but at the end of the day you have to wait for the uh you know rest intervals to finish so you can continue to move forward the time is finally up love walking on this trail one of the best ways to balance your routine is just to add some variety so adding variety in your cardio like with walking which is pretty low intensity. It's not, you know, too taxing on the body. And you still burn a decent amount. Like if you're walking on an incline, you can end up, you know, getting your heart rate over 100, depending on where you're at fitness wise. And it does take a lot longer to burn the same amount of calories with like different types of workouts. So like a boxing workout, you could probably burn close to 750 to maybe a thousand within an hour. With walking, it really depends on your weight and your fitness level and the terrain like it's going to be hard to maybe burn like 400 500 with an hour but still even though it's not as efficient it's still you know pretty good on the body and with strength training you can you know change your variety too so by doing different types of strength training like barbell work dumbbell work uh, doing different intervals doing like high intensity or you know doing max strength so there's different types of things you could do to you know add variety and by adding the variety you can also you know stimulate different types of muscle adaptations and with those different types of adaptations they you know they won't tax your body in the same way so you can kind of structure it in a way where you're actually able to sustainably train for a longer duration of time you're actually able to recover and you know not wake up and feel like you got hit by a bus so staying consistent is also going to make a huge difference on how you're feeling day to day you want to continually expose yourself to new stimulus and over time if you're you know consistent with it you're going to adapt and the recovery process won't be as challenging and it won't be as you know uncomfortable to recover from your workouts at least for your strength workouts and you know there is a normal amount of discomfort when you start a new training program or you start a new cycle so that's to be expected but it's those like long breaks like a week or two or like four to five weeks where you just don't train at all those abrupt you know changes with long breaks in between are just very detrimental to how you're going to feel day to day you need to consistently expose yourself to new stimulus and that's going to allow you to balance your routine better because you're going to be able to, you know, kind of have an idea of where your soreness is at. And if you have an idea where your soreness is at, you can kind of balance the cardio with the strength training. And for cardio, 
So carbon is basically your ability to, you know, utilize oxygen effectively. And we do that every day. Like we need to breathe on a day to day basis. So it goes pretty fast. So if you stop moving around um, more than you were before, you're going to start to decondition uh, pretty much instantly. And you need to continually expose yourself and maintain a certain level of activity to, you know, continually to use the oxygen in an efficient way. People with like very, very, you know, chill lives and they don't move around that much are going to have a challenge if they, you know, go to like a new setting, like a city or something like that. So keep an idea of like where you want to be moving wise and then move back and uh, kind of plan your workouts and adjust from there. So with the first couple tips, there's been like one main reoccurring theme and that's recovery. So your ability to recover effectively and, you know, manage your fatigue is going to dictate how effective your training program is. And it's going to make the biggest difference on whether or not you're going to be able to balance your cardio and your strength training routine. So strength training and cardio are two different things and they have two different adaptations. But if you manage your fatigue, you know, correctly, you can minimize that as much as possible. That's the main priority with fatigue management and recovery is to minimize the, you know, negative effects of cross training so that you're able to kind of optimize and adjust your training program to get the most out of your day without, you know, feeling horrible, like when you wake up. So that's the main priority. So for tip number three, just prioritize muscle recovery. And that could be anything from, you know, getting sleep to eating right, like nutrition wise, managing your stress on a day to day basis. All those play a factor into how effective your recovery process is and everybody's different. So it's definitely something that has to be developed over time. It's, there's not like a cookie cutter way to maximize your muscle recovery. It's just what's working for you and your lifestyle at the current moment. To make the highest quality decisions though, you need to be aware of what you need to work on, where you're going, and then work backwards from there. So if you know where you're going, it's a lot easier to make adjustments. But if you have no idea or you're just guessing, you need like a very clear idea where you're going. Like you need it written down on paper with clear metrics. Like I want to gain X amount of weight. I want to be at X amount of body fat. I want to run this fast. I want to jump this high. I want to do it in this amount of time. That's the best way to go about it. That's what I do. There are periods where I'm doing maintenance and I'm just trying to, you know, decompress after a heavy cut or decompress after a stressful period of my life. But for the most part, having a clear understanding of where you're going makes it a lot easier to make adjustments. And adjustments are where, you know, you see the best results because you can, you know, say you want to be somewhere, but if you're not making adjustments, you don't get started, you're never going to get there, right? You can also, you know, just looking good in general, like being GOAT helps you get better opportunities for work because people are gravitated towards people that are fit and healthy. Like just a natural inclination, whether you agree with me, it's just, is what it is. Like when you look good and you're fit, people want to be around you. So yeah, pick a goal and then move forward. Once you clarify your goals and you have an idea where you're going, you're aware of things that are going to get in the way. It's just really picking daily actions that are going to be in line with the things that you have going on, not just with your cardio or your strength workouts, but with your day-to-day -day life. Like having everything in sync makes it a lot easier to get to where you need to get to. But to have it in sync, you need to be aware. You need to be aware. You need to have an idea of like what you want. So keep it going. Once you get everything locked in, you just gotta optimize, 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 and continue optimizing. And continuing to look, you know, at yourself and what you're doing day to day. And try to get some opinions from other people. Try to look at your apps, see what's going on, and just continue to optimize. That's all you really gotta do. And for me, you know, what I'm doing right now, I just finished a heavy cut. So my energy levels are fluctuating day to day. I've been used to <clears throat> I've been using way too much, you know, pre-workout to get through my day to day because I'm still adjusting to the weight that I'm at now. I wasn't at this weight last year. I wasn't at this weight a few months ago. So I've just been doing maintenance just to decompress. And I'm not gonna do a heavy cut like I did before, but I'm gonna adjust my strength training. And that the lowest weight I had was like 174. Weighed in this morning at like 178. I'm gonna float around. 175 for the rest of the year probably but she did dial in everything i stay focused to maintain my energy and my strength as i go to the last few weeks of the year and sometimes you know you don't really figure out what you want to do until you you know get to the next stage right so i think when i get to the top of the year i'm not big on new year's resolutions but when i get to the top of the year i'll have some more clarity with 
what's going on and once my energy comes back a little better and I'm not taking 400 milligrams of pre, I should feel a little more clear-headed, but you know, I won't know until I get there, so yeah.